Why do you do what you do? If you want to lose weight or get fitter or have a better relationship or be happier or build some kind of business, achieve some kind of goal, why are you doing it? You know, I recently talked to a client and she told me that she was considering giving up and she had no reason really to go on doing it. So I asked her this famous question, why are you doing it? Why did you start it in the first place? So many of the time, so much of the time, we don't even know why we do the things we do because we're driven by unconscious things, how we want other people to perceive us, how we want the world to perceive us, things to show off or show mommy, show daddy how much we've grown or how much we've changed. All that stuff is complete BS. That doesn't drive you to do great things. You know, George Mallory, one of the guys, one of the first teams to try to climb Mount Everest, who ended up dying on Mount Everest. When he was asked at the base of Mount Everest, why do you want to climb this mountain? He didn't give a reason. He just said, because it's there. It really comes down to you knowing yourself. What is it that you value more than anything else in the world? And why is this goal? Whether it's losing weight and getting fitter, whether it's some business, whether it's travel, how does that goal help you live the life you really want deep down? If you removed ego, if you removed money, if you removed proving mommy and daddy and all your friends how fit you got, why would you still be doing this? You know, there's another famous story, Buster Douglas, who beat Mike Tyson, famous boxer. And at that time, Mike, no one thought Mike could be beaten. And Buster Douglas, his mom had just died. He just got out of an alcohol recovery center for addiction. And his life was just completely crumbled. And he made a promise to his mom that he would do this. So when he got punched in the face and knocked down, he got back up because something deeper than just what you see was driving him. A deeper why, much, much bigger than just winning the fight or just beating Mike Tyson. If it were just to beat Mike Tyson, the best boxer, he probably would have lost. But guess what? He didn't. And the why, if you never saw behind the scenes, his why was that his mom was dead. The fact that he just got out of alcohol recovery center. The fact that everything else was crumbling around him. What it really comes down to is you understanding yourself. You know, I can't give you this formula for driving yourself and being motivated and inspired and knowing what to do every single day to get yourself to achieve these goals. I Listen, I wish there were a formula like this, but as far as I know, there isn't. The only formula is to know thyself as the saying goes. You need to know what drives you. So what is it that drives you to do a goal? Is it freedom? Maybe you want to get fitter because it means freedom from being criticized, from hating yourself, from food controlling your life. Figure out what it is, the real why, the real, real, real why behind what you do. It is almost never the first one, two, or three things you put down on that piece of paper. If you go through, you start jotting them out, you're going to say things like, yeah, I want to feel more confident. Yeah, I want to look good for the beach. But keep going and you're going to dig up much deeper things you never would have discovered. When I first started going to the gym about 10 years ago, I did it because I hated how I looked. I flat out, I hated how skinny I looked. I hated that when I looked in the mirror, I hated looking in the mirror. I hated that I didn't think I had a girlfriend because of how I physically looked. But when I dug deeper, look, that will drive you. But that's not going to get you to do something for over 10 years like I've been doing it now. When I looked deeper, the reason why I kept going, when I could have quit a long time ago, after five years of lifting and still looking like a twig, the reason why I kept going was because of the fact that I hate mediocrity. I hate the average life. I hate when I walk around and I see people settling for crappy jobs, for bad health, for abusive relationships, for not going on the adventures and writing the books they want to write, traveling to the places they want to see. I hate, I have an irrational fear of mediocrity. I'm afraid of it. I hate it more than anything else because I believe that it takes 1% more effort to live a great life than it does a mediocre one. It takes 1% more effort to look and feel amazing rather than come back on the couch and just be the way you currently are, the way I currently was. It takes 1% more effort to go Build a business if that's what you want to do, to quit your job, to write a book if you really have a message to share. It takes 1% more effort to go from living the mediocre life that's unfulfilling to the great life. That's what really drove me. It wasn't my 
hatred of my own body. It was really my irrational fear and hatred of living the average life. And I think so many of us forget this. We go and pursue these goals for shallow reasons, which is fine, but just remember, because they are shallow reasons, the roots of your motivation are gonna be shallow too. They're not gonna drive you when you get up against those roadblocks, when you get up against those walls and those thorns in the path. They're just not gonna drive you. They're not gonna help you get there. So you need to figure out why, truly why, you are driven to achieve the health and life goals you want. And I'm gonna leave you with a quote from Mark Twain, where he said, the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why.